I joined the NBA, I worked for around 35 years as a political journalist, mainly based at Westminster, covering British politics, but also health, social care and education. After that, in 2013, my husband suffered a serious stroke, so I became his full-time carer for the best part of a year while he was undergoing his rehabilitation. At the end of that time, I was asked to go and chair a Cambridge College, known as Lucy Cavendish College at the University of Cambridge. I was called the college president there. I essentially ran the college, chaired the governing body, uh, and also gained a lot of experience in fundraising and in good governance. Throughout my time, I've sat on various committees. I've been on the Biomedical Research Council Committee at UCLH. I've also worked for the Royal Television Society, where I'm on the committee there that judges awards. And I'm president of the National Cochlear Implant Users Association, so a variety of things. Since leaving Cambridge, I've been back in London, where I became a trustee of the Carers' Trust 18 months ago. And in the last month, I have joined the National Brain Appeal as chair. very close affinity with Queen Square because several family members and friends have been treated there and indeed probably owe their lives to the hospital. Uh, my daughter, who's now in her 20s, suffered a pituitary tumour which was misdiagnosed elsewhere at first but then was diagnosed and indeed operated on, removed at Queen Square. So we're eternally grateful to the surgeons there for that. Uh, my husband then had a stroke and while he wasn't there for his immediate care, he spent three months as a sort of outpatient at Queen Square having upper limb rehabilitation. So big family connection there and huge gratitude from all the family. Uh, and then also I have two friends, very sadly one of whom has died, who have suffered, one is still suffering, from glioblastoma, which is a very, very nasty kind of brain cancer and which Queen Square is working to try to find cures or at least ways of extending life. Over and above that, I think like many families, I have had relatives who have dementia and uh, always looking for more research there to see what can be done. And indeed, I think dementia is perhaps becoming the thing that we all fear for ourselves as well uh, as we grow older. So I'm wholeheartedly behind all the research in that field too. hoping to achieve is to turn the MBA into the best known, most lucrative charity in the country. Well, not quite. What I'm hoping to achieve is to grow the MBA, to raise its profile, to find more supporters, to make more people aware of the wonderful work being done at Queen Square and interest them in supporting our charity. I think there's a lot more that can be done. I think given how world beating the researchers and the doctors at Queen Square are, we perhaps don't have the profile we might have. So one of my aims is to do that. We also have very ambitious fundraising targets now. We're aiming to treble, if, and more than treble, our annual income over the next few years. Now that's going to be hard given the COVID crisis, but it just makes me even more determined to look at all the possible ways we can think of to increase our fundraising. I also want to make us more accountable, more transparent. I want staff to feel valued, uh, to feel they can give their feedback, and I want the trustees also to feel that they're really playing a part in this great charity. The chair and trustees are responsible financially and legally for everything that happens at the charity. So if there were to be some mismanagement, then we, the trustees, would be responsible for that. So our role essentially is to make sure that everything is done properly, that there is good governance, that we follow charity commission guidelines, that we're transparent, that our accounts are done properly, that we check that nothing is done that is untoward. We're also there to make sure there's no bullying or anything like that. So we have a range of policies in place which make sure this happens. As you'll know, there have been quite a number of issues recently involving major charities, whether it's bullying, harassment or money going missing, which I think has done quite a lot to cause distrust in the charity sector. So it's particularly essential at this time that we make sure all our procedures are in place and that everything is done properly. We're also there to guide and to oversee the work done by the chief executive and her team. Uh, we're there as helpful counsel, but also uh, asking questions as well. So we have a dual role when it comes to the chief executive to make sure we're there to provide advice and guidance, but also to ask those questions that need asking. to say I was going to run the marathon. I know our chief executive, Theresa Dauncey, is going to run the marathon, but sadly having 
injured my knee in a very bad skiing accident some years ago. Uh, my running days are over, so I'm hoping there are some challenges that I can join in with. But meanwhile, I think I'll look forward to a number of fundraising events. I think we'll be having some talks with our clinicians, no doubt some dinners, maybe another quiz. I quite enjoy quiz evenings. Uh, so I'm up for supporting all the events that I can. And uh, as I say, for the marathon, I'll be there on the sidelines cheering our team along and wishing that I could run, but sadly not joining them. Thank you.